This technology came about the need for non-contact measurement systems for creating digital representations of physical objects. We started off with the more traditional touch probing technology. This emerging non-contact laser scanning has really uh, provided a huge opportunity to move into new markets such as the medical industry, the heritage sector and uh, look, looking at uh, creating digital representations of uh, of really rare, rare pieces of um, heritage. This all started when I visited the Coventry and Transport Museum about a month ago. I was walking around looking at all their fantastic exhibits they've got there and it really got me thinking about what happened to the Sarkin Museum where all those rare exhibits were damaged and they had no way of replacing them. We've been interested in this sort of idea for the museum for quite some time and um, it was actually just a cold call from Mark, Mark Williams. He got in touch saying we've got this fantastic technology, would you be interested in getting involved? So we said yeah, very much like to. The car we chose to bring along today is a 1928 Lee Francis Hyper. It was the car that won the Ulster TT in 1928, driven by quite a famous racing driver at the time, Kay Don. And it's a very, very unique car. It's very well known in the racing circuit. At the museum, we get quite a lot of people come to us and say, can we borrow a part? Can we have a, a, a piston from a certain car uh, or a, you know, a, a component from that car? Because there's no drawings left. So the only way that they can actually get a casting made or something like that is to have that part, take it away, create a mould and have the casting. Well obviously if we can scan these, the, you know, those castings, we can then actually CAD them up and then they can be made from those CAD designs from the computer on CMC machines. So there is an aspect there that we might be able to help enthusiasts in the future by producing these parts for them. Laser head will project a laser line through a mirror and that will scan over the surface of the car and from that laser line there'll be a reflection and that can judge the distance and the profile of the of the car and as you can see here the profile will come across this particular laser will generate almost 20,000 points per second it can be quite a lengthy process what you've seen here today is the actual scanning part where it generates point cloud measurement for a small part it can take five minutes for a whole vehicle it can take a couple of days to get all the information that you want from that point cloud data you need to be able to generate a surface so you have to interpolate between the point clouds to generate a surface and from that it needs to be smoothed out to remove all the dents and surface inconsistencies and then from that you'll be able to generate a model and you'll be able to render it be able to apply material characteristics so you can get a photorealistic model from the end of it it would take anything to a week to create an exact replica of this car because obviously it's very complex, there are different materials. Um, this is a laser at the end of the day, and any, you know, we're measuring reflective surfaces and absorbent surfaces creates a, an additional problem in itself. So we feel in a, in a week we'll have an accurate 3D representation permanently, which we can then manipulate in the computer to either recreate components or, or parts if it's damaged, or even for access within the uh, film industry. We can actually create models, you know, digital representations of these models, so we can even crash them, in, crash them in the computer and not damage the real components. So there's all sorts of applications we can use once we have that library of electronic data that represents that part, we, we can do what we like with it. Very exciting opportunity. One of the things that we hope to get out of this project is to actually reproduce these mascots. In the museum it's very difficult to leave them on top of the radiators where they sit because unfortunately they do get stolen or they might get damaged. Very useful to have a copy of this sort of thing because we can put them on top of the cars so that in future if they get damaged or if they get stolen it's not the original that's getting stolen it's just a copy like this. And of course we may even be able to sell them in the shop so there is a sort of commercial element to it as well.